When it comes to cutscenes in video games, most people can agree that they would rather watch a cinematically designed video than have to skip through a lot of dialogue to learn what's going on. In today's video, we're going to be making a cutscene that is similar to one from one of my old games. So this is what we'll be making today. We'll have a text that uh, fades in and fades out. Then we'll have a character playing animations and moving around the screen. And then we'll be able to switch back to our game. All right, go into the scenes folder, create a new scene, call this something like cutscene. Then inside of that new scene, create a new empty game object, call it timeline. Open up the timeline window and with the timeline object selected, hit create. This will create a playable director on the timeline game object. Make a new folder for your timeline and call it cutscene. And you can see that we have a playable director now. Right click in the hierarchy underneath your timeline game object and create a UI text mesh pro. This will create a canvas underneath that object. Change the font and set the anchoring with shift alt. Change the alignment to middle on both, T for the transform tool and scale it up to a reasonable size. Now you can change the text. Underneath the canvas, we're going to create another UI image. This is going to be the background, so scale it up all the way in the anchoring and change the color to black. Now if we fade it away, you can see it's going to fade out to our game, which is exactly what we want. Rename the title and duplicate it. Call it something different. You can now change the text again. And you can also change the font size to be a little bigger. And for some reason, when we save, all of our text goes away. And that is a strange bug that I've had with Unity that I'm not exactly sure how to fix. All right, back in our timeline, we're going to add a new animation track. We can drag and drop in the first text and hit create animator on start title. Hit record and we can now keyframe anything that we want. So turn all the way down on the L opacity at zero in the timeline, move forward, turn it up, and move forward again and turn it back down. This will have us keyframing our opacity if we could see our text. Alright, now on the next one, we're going to do the exact same process. Adding a new animation track first, then keyframing the opacity. And you want to make sure that the first keyframe of the second text is after the final keyframe of the first text or else the second text will be keyframing at the same time that the first text is and nothing is going to look quite right. All right, and I'm gonna make this one scale up near the end and get bigger as the opacity goes down. All right, add a new animation track, drag in the background, make sure this opacity is at the top of the very final keyframe of the last animation. Then, sometime later, we're going to make it fade away. Now, you can see that our background will fade away. If we hit play, we can preview how this is going to look. And you can see that it's looking quite nice. Our background is fading, so we're going to copy the tile map from our last scene and paste it into here, so that we have the same scene. Move the camera around to wherever you want it. I'm going to move mine down by the river. Create an empty game object for the player. Change a sprite underneath it to be whatever sprite you want. And then set that sprite to be on the tile map. To be on the tile map. To be on the tile Move the player to an appropriate position. And now we're going to create a new animation track by dragging and dropping him into the timeline very end of our animation, this is when our player is going to start to move around, so keyframe his position at the top, move forward a little ways, and then we're going to move him down slightly. Now we're going to keyframe his position, this is just standing there, 
So we're just going to put in that same keyframe again and then move him off to the right a little bit later. For a one final animation track for the sprite underneath the player, we're going to change this to play the animations. So drag your project window up above the timeline window, go under your animations. So I'm going to move idle down over here, drag it to about the size I want, and put it to where he's sitting and waiting at the river. Go back into your run, and we'll make him run down to the river. So drag that out to about that size. You can see now he's running, which is good. And if you want, you can even make him turn by changing the item animation that he plays while standing still. So he will now turn and look at the river. Let's add one final run animation, and this will be him running off into the right. You can now see that he's running off to the right, and we'll watch our animation. All of the text is looking good, and you can see that now it's fading away to our scene. He runs down, he looks left, and he runs right. But you may notice that this is too smooth, so we're going to fix that now. Go back into the timeline, double click on the keyframing of the position to open it up in the animator. Select all of these keyframes, right click, and hit both tangents linear. This will make the curves of the curve graph completely flat so there's no acceleration on movement. Alright, now we can create another empty game object, call it scene changer, and add a script to it. We're going to remove the start function, add a public float for our change time and make this function private. Add a new using field up here for scene management and this will give us access to all of Unity's scene management functions so we can change scenes and things like that. And add a string call it scene name. Now we're going to say scene manager dot load scene by scene name. And we only want this to happen when change time is at zero so minus equals it by time dot delta time and check and see if it's less than zero. If so, we're gonna load our scene. Change the time to the length of your animation and change the scene to the name of your game scene, making sure that it's in the build settings. Now we can watch our scene and see that everything is playing out very nicely. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified when the next one comes out. I'll see you later.